Go ahead, make like B. Stick your tongue out. After all, it is almost Tongue Out Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that is a thing. <laughs> and it's celebrated at Barn Hill Preserve of Delaware in Frankfurt. Josh Mueller is the owner of the preserve, and he joins us via Zoom. Good afternoon, Josh. Good afternoon. How are we doing today? Doing great. Um, you are not alone. Tell us who you got with you there. So I've got Zoe here with me, and Zoe is one of our residents at Barn Hill, and she's a Eurasian eagle owl, which are actually considered one of the largest species of owls in the world. Oh, my goodness. So this is something that someone can just stop by and see, because I'll be honest with you, I've never seen a Zoe around my house. <laughs> yeah, so you're never going to find them in the U.S. These guys are actually found in the southern parts of Asia and northern parts of Europe. So they're pretty good with the cold climate like we're having today. Um, but, yeah, if you come on over anytime, we always have her in all of our programs for everybody to be able to see, and you can even do encounters with her as well. She is not letting you out of her sight, is she? <laughs> no. Uh, she's always looking at me, most of the time at least, and uh, then she's kind of sc sc uh, scrolls around, and it almost looks like she's looking right through you with those massive eyes that she has, and she can see pretty well. My goodness. Wow. So this is the this is the kind of thing that Barnhill Preserve does, right? Yeah. So you know, a, a big part of, of what we like to do is education, and so with our Winterfest uh, event that we are hosting right now, which ends sadly at the end of the month, you're able to come to one of our animal presentations, and you'll see Zoe along with six other animals uh, that we choose for that day, and you get to learn about them. You get to get up close to them and really have an awesome experience that hopefully you'll never forget. And I know we're all pretty cold, and I'm sure it's cold there at Frankfurt as well. How do you keep these animals warm? So, you know, all of our animals can handle different climates. Our ones that can handle the really cold like it gets in the wintertime here, we allow them to stay outdoors year-round. We'll give them some small nest boxes or hides that they can get in to get away from the, the bad elements and the wind. And then some of our smaller friends... And tropical friends that can't handle the cold, we keep them indoors in different, um, we have several different buildings for our animals, depending on what kind of humidity they need and, and, and temperatures as well for them. So they stay nice and warm. And then when we do our events, we've got heaters running all the time, heat pads for them. Uh, and then they're also going to have some skin to skin action with us to keep them nice and warm too. Okay, so let me flip the, the question that Lisa just asked. You said Zoe likes the colder climates. How do you keep Zoe cool in the summer? So I, she likes the cool climates, but she can handle the, the warm ones too. You know, she's one of those animals that are just really rigged. Uh, no matter what it is, most times she's going to be okay. When it's really hot, you'll see her panting, and that's just kind of like a dog, you know, trying to get rid of that excess heat out of them. Days like this, obviously, there's no need for that because it is cold, so she's not getting overheated or getting really hot. Uh, but she does a really great job being able to regulate her own body temperature. And, Josh, you just mentioned skin to skin. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, for instance, like our tortoises and our, our lizards, they don't do well in the cold, so they really need a source of heat. Uh, in the wild, they'll sit on rocks that are going to be getting warmed up by the sun, so that helps warm their bodies up. We can do the same thing because we're going to be a lot warmer than they are already uh, since we can, you know, create our own body heat when they sit on top of us, and that's going to help keep them nice and warm as well. So with COVID, and, and you're talking about your educational opportunities, with this whole COVID thing, are those still available? So some of our th um, opportunities are we don't really allow everyone to hold our animals anymore. Um, we kind of switched over to allowing you to be able to get some photo opportunities with them or help us feed them as well. So you can give them some snacks. Zoe here, you know, she's not the easiest one to give snacks to because it's not like you can just give her a, a little piece of zucchini like our sloths. You're kind of giving her a whole mouse, and it's usually not as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. All right. So we're not done. Uh, you're going to show off another little cutie coming up next. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I got two little cuties that are actually brothers. Well, first, it was Zoe's uh, time in the spotlight. Now, we are going to see how salt and Peppa shine. We are back with Josh Mueller, the owner of Barnhill Preserve of Delaware in Frankfurt. Now, Josh, you've got some uh, salt and Peppa for us? 
Yeah. So uh, down here, hiding for us is actually salt and pepper. Oh. <laughs> now, if these guys could speak, the first thing that they would say is, I am not a hedgehog. And a lot of people mistaken them for that. And it doesn't make it any easier that hedgehog is actually in their name. So these guys are called the Lesser Hedgehog Tinric. And so these guys are found in Madagascar. And they are pretty cute with their little faces. Now you can see how small those eyes are. So they have really bad eyesight. So they really rely on their sense of smell and hearing uh, to be able to get around and know what's around them. Okay, so Josh, uh, let me ask you then. You say these are not hedgehogs. These are lesser hedgehogs. Is there a hedgehog that's different than salt and pepper? So they're a tinric. Um, there's about 30 different types of tinrics in the world. Uh, and, and unfortunately, two of them have the name hedgehog. There's the greater hedgehog tinric and the lesser hedgehog tinric. Uh, okay. But there are the uh, African hedgehog, which is a common animal that can be a pet sometimes for people. So a lot of people try to or tend to mix them up with one another because they look a little oh. similar, but their faces are very different. Just their bodies both have these spines on the back of them that uh, allow them to have some protection from other animals that might try to eat them. Now, they're really little. Um, are they full grown? Yeah, so these guys don't get very big. Um, they're going to grow a little bit more, but they usually max out right around five and a half to seven inches long. So they're not a super large animal, but, you know, these guys are pretty young. They were just born last spring, uh, so they're still growing up, on, and these two are brothers. How about that? And you said they were nocturnal, so I feel like we should apologize for waking them up to be on TV. Yeah, they're definitely probably not super pleased that they're awake right now. But at the same time, they know that they're going to get some tasty treats later on today for, you know, getting up for us. Can you tell them apart? So uh, it's a little tricky sometimes, but there's a little bit of coloration difference to them that can make it a little bit easier for us to distinguish. But sometimes, you know, like twins, you can accidentally mix them up still. <laughs> they don't, yeah, they don't go for the name tag thing, I guess. So, Josh, tell me real quick. Uh, the, the fact that you guys do what you do is totally amazing to me. Uh, you've shown us uh, a Eurasian eagle owl. I think that was right. Is it what so yeah. it is. You've got uh, salt and pepper here. What other animals do you have? So we actually have 22 different species of animals at our facility, um, ranging from reptiles as small as bearded dragons and blue-tongued skinks uh, to as big as American alligators. Uh, we also have Eurasian lynx, red kangaroos, wallabies. We have so many different animals here uh, for people to be able to come and visit and, and uh, see. Well, thank you so much for uh, showing off these cuties to us today. Uh, Salt and Peppa, thank you so much. Enjoy your little treat you're going to get in a few minutes. Josh Mueller, owner <laughs> of Barnhill Preserve of Delaware in Frankfurt. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful talking to you. Do it again soon.